Improv Tipsters, Paul Valancourt here, back with another improv tip. And today I want to talk about short form versus long form improv. I've been teaching a little bit online lately, and so I've been uh, meeting a broader cross section of improvisers, some of who have uh, a lot of um, short form experience as well as long form or narrative, but just meeting a lot of different people. And so it's been on my mind lately that I've never really talked about short form versus long form improv. So I want to talk about it a little bit today. Let's start off with definitions. Short form improv. Short form improv is usually what you think of when you think of like whose line is it anyway, right? It's improv games like alphabet game where each line of dialogue begins with the next letter of the alphabet or a genre option where we're doing a scene and someone says freeze and then we continue the scene in a new genre from the audience, right? Usually there is a host who is introducing the game, telling the audience how it works and then who's getting the suggestions. Also, every game usually gets at least one, uh, at least one suggestion, sometimes more than one suggestion. The scene's usually a bit shorter, um, and the whole thing goes a little bit quicker. It's a little bit snappier. It moves along really quickly. Um, again, like I said, whose line is it anyway is a really fantastic, great example. Now, versus long form. In long form, it's a little bit more like if you've ever seen the documentary Trust Us, This Is All Made Up about the TJ and Dave show or Middle Ditch and Schwartz, which is now on Netflix. I think these are two really great examples of long form improv where we don't really have a host who's who's getting a bunch of suggestions. Usually it's like one suggestion or like Middle Ditch and Schwartz starts with a little bit of a conversation with the audience to, to generate some information, but it's not like, can I have like five locations and three professions? Or whatever. It's more of a sort of a, about, um, it's a little bit more about sort of the the, the information that, that, that we're getting and then we use it in a bunch of different ways, but it's not as many suggestions. It's not as, as suggestion heavy as short form improv. Also, long form improv tends to move a little bit slower and we're building scenes that are a little bit more complex than in the in short form. Um, it's also a little bit more theatrical. It's kind of a little bit more like watching a play uh, than, than short form is. And sometimes uh, I'll also say in long form, there is no host at all. One of my favorite long form shows of all time, The Chris Hogan Show with Chris Hogan and John Lair, there is no host. They just came out on stage and started talking about their day, just talking to each other and that sort of morphed into the first scene. Right, so so those are our two the two things we're going to be talking about today. Short form, sort of more like games improv, like whose lines did anyway, and long form, sort of more. Um, uh, we don't have the games, but we have uh, these forms, like a herald or a montage or whatever, sort of like Middle Edition Schwartz or the TJ and Dave show. Now let's talk about short form. What are some of the benefits and some of the traps of short form? Well, in short form, as I said, we have these games, and I think that's really great. And I, what I love about the games is it's such a great, um, really strong uh, safety net for players. Because as you're doing the scenes, you know that the structure of the game, the next line of dialogue is going to start the next letter of the alphabet, is a really great support for you. And you know kind of what you have to do. Oh, I have to come up with a line that starts with that. And, and, and it really supports, especially newer players, I think people hook onto it much more quickly because... Um, because the the the, stru the structure is so supportive, and you get a chance to really sort of you know try stuff out, but knowing that the game's always going to keep moving forward, always going to keep keep moving on. Okay. Also, I think in short form we we get to work on these really specific skills. Like in genre option, we're really working on the idea of genre, like really picking out those big ideas about genre and really getting after those. Or in emotional option, we're really digging into or leaning into emotions. I think that's really really exciting. So the intersection of those two things, which I think is also really great about short form, is that because we're not supporting as much weight and because the safety net is so strong because of the games and we're really, we have the chance to work on these specific skills, in short form, I feel like we get really get a chance to really practice making big choices because we know the game's only going to go on for so long. We're just doing this one scene here. We can make a big choice and the stakes of it are a little bit lower because we know it's not like, oh, the rest of the Herald or the rest of the montage or whatever is going to go on for another half an hour. No, it's like maybe three minutes, right? So we really practice. This is a really meta skill. We really practice making big choices in short form. I think that's really, really great. So what are the traps? Of short form. Well, in short form, one thing is because because we have these games and they're very sort of set, we can get to know the games too well. 
And then we know, well, at this point, if I say this, or if I do this, or the letter X, if I do this, it's going to get a laugh or whatever. So sometimes we know the games too well, and we really start playing the game more than the scene right? Start playing the game more than the scene, the tricks of the game, the tropes or the, the, the oh, I know this is going to work stuff of the, of the game. Another thing is that because the games move so quickly and they're, and they're sort of really fun and funny, the temptation is to get, to go for the laugh to go for the laugh. And because you have such a great safety net and because you know kind of what's coming down the road, maybe you know the game really well, it's easy to get those laughs. So then you sort of get on the on the laugh standard that it's a good show if it gets a lot of laughs. And that's not necessarily the case. So those two things like work together to for the third trap, which I think is bad habits. That that because you're working in short form and you don't have to sort of build these scenes that sort of bear weight over over a long longer haul, you can get some you can develop, develop some bad habits that may not come to light because the safety net of the structure is so strong and your bad habits, you don't have to end up paying the piper for that because you're, because you're moving quickly. You're not building scenes for the long haul. And, uh, and like I said, the safety net is so strong. So you don't really have to pay for your bad habits. And that's, that's just, uh, that's tricky. Cause when you see someone, sometimes I've gone to see short form groups where they're, they're so, they're really funny and they make a lot of laugh, but you can also tell that, oh, that guy does that every time. Or that woman's always that character or they, oh, this, this is just kind of going through the motions of this laugh machine game. Um, but they're not really invested in it. They're just kind of like doing it cause they know it's going to get laughs if they do it X, Y, Z way. So they're not really, um, not really doing it, not really invested in it. Long form. What are the benefits and traps of long form? Well, in the benefits, I think that you're going to go a little bit slower in long form generally. And as a consequence of that, you really get to explore more. You get to explore character. You get to explore the where. You get to build this more fully realized world that you're operating in, right? Also, I think because we're building scenes that, are, that have to exist now and be a good scene now, but also have to bear some weight for the future and sort of build a foundation for the future, the scenes tend to be a little bit stronger, a little bit more well constructed, have a little bit more emotional integrity. All these things where we're going a little bit slower, all these things that are benefits of that, right? And it's a little bit more theatrical. It's kind of like more like watching a a play because the the characters have usually have deeper wants and deeper feelings and fuller lives because we are building not only for now but for the future and we're taking our time a little bit more. Um, also because we're taking our time and we're sort of paying off long, right? Maybe at the end of the, of the Herald or the montage tag outs and things start coming back and it really builds and builds and builds. But because we know that we're building and we have a little bit more of a theatrical model, right? There's a little bit less pressure to be funny moment to moment, right? And that's great. And we don't have to go for the joke. We can just really build, uh, build characters and build scenes and build worlds and not worry about the funny, right? Um, uh, Del Close used to say that our, our, our obligation to the audience is just to be interesting. And I think that when we're doing short form, that plays out a little bit differently because they really want to see funny stuff, right, more. And then we are playing uh, in long form, you know, people are on, on board for a little bit longer ride. So they're not as pr like sort of, oh, when's it going to, when's it going to laugh? When's it? We can just be funny, uh, be sort of um, real and sort of build. And then later on, it can sort of pay off bang, bang, bang in these bigger sorts of ways. Um, also, I think in long form, we can push the boundaries of improv because we can sort of, oh, I'm doing a Herald. Okay. Or I can do a montage or an impressionist horror, or maybe uh, we're going to do an improvised Star Trek or whatever. And we're pushing the bounds of what improv can do. And I think because we're using these bigger, broader, structures that are not games that have so many rules they have fewer rules they give us a lot more latitude to invent and innovate within the structure within a long form piece now what are the traps of long form well one is that uh it can be a little bit navel gazing at times that is to say that in long form we can just be doing sort of more and more abstract we're pushing the boundaries yes but maybe we're pushing them in a way that's like 
who really cares except other improvisers. In that case, we're doing improv for improvisers, right? It's just like, oh man, like what are we doing? We, we, it's, uh, it becomes a little sort of incestuous where it just turns in on itself, turns in on itself. And it's not really sort of expanding outward or sort of, um, not that appealing to the audience is the most important thing, but if people are there and they've paid their money, then I think we are obliged to give them a good show. But I think sometimes with long form, it can be, uh, well, it's just, it's, this is just for us. We're sort of exploring, we're sort of figuring out. And I don't know if that's necessarily the best relationship. Also, um, if you work with the same team for a long time, which happens a lot of times, if you work with the same team a lot of times, just like in short form, you get to know the games too well, you can get to know your teammates too well, and then you get in a groove with them. A groove is good to a certain point, but when it's like, oh, I know that I'm always the physical one, and he's always the the smart one and she's always the the body one and he and she's always the um she's always the one that wraps it all up at the end then we all sort of get in our roles our sort of meta roles, almost like in a family everyone has different roles in the family we get in our roles on a team and we kind of do the same role or the same thing over and over and we're not really then still innovating or inventing or or, or furthering the art form which is we should try to be doing with every with every show. Um, and also, finally, uh, sort of along with the idea of it being improv for improvisers, sometimes the shows, because we're, uh, it's a little bit more art e artsy, the shows can be uh, kind of important and precious. And look, we're pushing the bounds of improv in this way and that way. And it takes itself maybe a little bit too seriously, right? Look, I'm the first one to say we should take our art seriously. And I have. For 30 years, I've really taken it seriously. But by the same token, I also know that when I'm doing it on stage in front of an audience, I have a certain obligation to them, right? To present the best show possible and not to get so in love with my own work that, oh, it doesn't matter what they think, right? You know, there's like there's like this give and take between the audience of uh, and, and the performer, right? And I think that sometimes improv can turn in on itself and just be improv for improvisers, or we're just doing it for ourselves. And if you're just doing it for yourselves, then just do it for yourself in your garage or your basement or empty theater or whatever. But as soon as the audience shows up, I think we owe them a little bit of something. Let me talk about my experience with short form. In short, I started off in short form in college. I saw my very first improv show, which was actually, in a weird way, really interesting because it was a combination of short form and long form. The first half of the show was all short form games, bang, bang, bang. And then the last half was a herald. And so I got to see both those things. It was my first improv show. I got to see both those things at the same time. And immediately, I was like really in love. If you've seen any of my videos, I probably you've probably heard the story of how I... Uh, saw my first improv show and how I fell in love and it was just like a calling. I knew that that's what I was going to do with the rest of my life. And in college, we did all, almost all, short form games. And I thought that was really fun. I thought it was really fun and we sort of would master the games and then we, but we tried to be conscious about pushing the limits and not getting into the same thing over and over again. Years later, as I sort of departed and went to long form for a while and then came back to short form, I really appreciated the things that short form had taught me. Short form had taught me to really make big choices, to really lean into the choices that I've made. A lot of my favorite performers have a short form background and you can see it when they do it because they're not sort of like um, detached from it. They're really leaning into it and really getting after it. They have a really great sense of attack on the scene, which are all things in my mind that short form really engenders and really teaches you, right? Um, also, as I sort of, when I go back and do, not go back, but when I go and do short form now, not very often, but sometimes, I really love, I really appreciate the, the, uh, the, the safety net of the short form games because you can make those really gigantic decisions. And I feel like when I'm playing short form now, every time I'm like, boom, swinging for the fence, I give it everything I've got. I lean into every choice so much more because I know that it doesn't have to support a lot of weight. It's not, maybe sometimes the choices that I make in short form are unsustainable in long form, right? So it's a little bit of knowing your medium. In short form, I know I can do X, Y, Z in this really big way. In long form, oh, I wouldn't do it maybe that way because I don't know if I can sustain that over the whole show, right? But I really love that when you're doing short form, you can really lean in and just like swing for the fences, man. That's really fantastic. Now in long form, when I when I graduated college and I went to Chicago and I started doing uh, Second City, which was like a little bit of a transition for me, and then I ended up at the I.O. in Chicago, I was doing long form, heralds and montages and improvised movies and all this kind of stuff. And what I really loved about that was sort of the things that, that long form is good at, building those scenes, 
acting a little bit more, right? Improvisers are actors, right? And so I got to act a little bit more. I got to deepen my work and make it more complex. And also to sustain. I got that feeling of sustaining ideas where in short form, I was like, boom, swinging for the fences. I felt my power in that way. Doing long form, it's sustaining over the long haul. And those characters, I felt my power, my endurance maybe as, an, as a performer really increased because I was involved in sustaining something over a longer period of time. I also love pushing the boundaries and making innovations. And and I did the improvised movie for a long time in Chicago and then with various teams. And now I do it as a one man show, man versus movie, right? And I learned so much from each of those things. And I think that each of those steps of my evolution from short form to long form to different kinds of long form to a one man show long form taught me things along the way. Right. And I feel like uh, I feel like some of my most gratifying moments in long form are when all those different elements that we've been sort of building along sort of boosh, come together, like the Herald, the experience of Herald that people talk about. That's those are some of my most um, cherished memories of doing improv is those intersections of ideas that come together sort of almost spontaneously at the end. So um, so I think those are some of the great things that I love about long form and short form. So what is my recommendation? My recommendation is to really do both. I really valued my short form experience when I was doing long form because I really felt like I, as I said, had that sense of attack on the scene, big choices, um, really getting after it in a way that I felt like some of my contemporaries who were only coming into long form, that was their first experience, they had, they, I was a little a couple steps ahead on those things. So I think that I got to really, um, I really shown out a little bit more in those early classes and early shows. And I really try to keep that in my work, that sense of attack. And I try to teach it to my students, that sense of attack and big choices and getting after the scene moment by moment. Right. And then in long form, when I, when I go back and do, when I go back, when I do short form, um, one of the things I really love about it is that now I try to bring a long form sensibility to the game. So even when I'm playing alphabet game, I really try to use the where, or I really try to build that relationship with my partner, or I try to build that scene in a way that is a little bit deeper and a little bit fuller maybe than I would have in college, right? A little bit deeper and fuller as if that scene was the first beat of a herald, as if that scene was like the first beat of a montage. I try to invest it with that same, sensibility, what I call playing short form with a long form sensibility, right? So I think by by you by playing in both styles, short form and long form, I think they have tons of lessons for each other, right? I think it deepens our work on both sides of the equation. And I'm a big believer in the spokes of the wheel theory of truth. That is, there's a wheel and in the very center is the hub, which is truth. And a bunch of those spokes from all different versions point at that truth. And I feel like short form and long form are both valid spokes that both point at the truth of improv, of, of what that is, of what the lessons it has to teach. So my recommendation, do them both. If you have only done long form, try out some short form. If you only be doing short form, push yourself, try out some long form, slow down, build those scenes, build those relationships, right? If you're in long form, really get after it. Make those big decisions. Lean into the choices that, that, that you make and really have a good sense of attack on the scene. If it's not loud and fast and crazy, a sense of attack is really getting after it, being really committed to it, right? So that's it. That's my take on short form versus long form. Why don't you tell me in the comments below what you prefer or what your experiences was or what you thought about this. I think it's just sort of an exploration of this idea of short form versus long form. It's kind of like the sharks and the jets for a lot of people. And I feel like um, I feel like I was one of those people. I was in short form. I really loved it. I went to long form, got a little snobby about short form. But then once I got over that snobbery, I realized, you know what? The reason I love long form so much is because I have this short form background. All these lessons I brought with me, man. So I think it's really, really important important to, to embrace both and come out with a unified approach. Long form with a short form attack or short form with a long form sensibility. I think all that can do nothing but help us all. Okay. I'll see you next week for, uh, for next week's tip. Reach out. Let me know what you thought about today's tip and um, I'll talk to you soon. Hey friends, thanks for checking out the video. And uh, if you wanna hear a little bit more, check out one of these two quality videos. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and follow us on social media. All the links are in the description down below. And let me know what you would like to see an improv tip about. Thanks for watching.